Hey, what is up, guys? For this video, I'm going to be solving the code 1059. All paths from source lead to destination. And essentially for this question, we're given a graph with directed uh, edges. And we're given a node which is designated as the source and one node that's designated as the destination. And we want to figure out if every path from the source node is going to end up going to the destination one. So in this example, we can see that that's not true because we have a path from the source zero that goes here to one and it just ends up there and it doesn't get us to the destination. So we end up returning false. So we only want to return true if and only if all of those paths from source ends up going to destination. So for example, if there was another directed edge here from one to two, then we, we would return to here because we have one path zero to one and one to two that gets us to the destination. And the other path that comes from the source goes straight to the destination. So that satisfies the requirement for the question and we return true for that. So the approach that I'm going to take here is a depth first search approach. And essentially starting from the source node, I'm going to uh, go through each of the paths. And if uh, we end up in a node that doesn't have any outgoing edges like this one here, for example, we can return false if and only if it's like the it's, it's not the destination node. So that's going to require us using a couple of extra data structures to keep track of some of the nodes we've seen. Uh, for example, if we're given uh, another node here, uh, something like so. So if we have zero and that goes to one and this goes to like uh, four and the destination is two. We want to have an extra data structure to keep track of the nodes we've seen to avoid going in a infinite loop. Uh, so let's, let's say we have like four that goes back to one. So now uh, this would end up being uh, returning false since not all the paths from the source end up going to the destination because we have this path that could go in an infinite loop which starts from zero, goes to one, goes to four, and just keeps going back and forth between one and four. So we're going to use a dictionary to spot something like this. Uh, we're just going to call it like a scene dictionary so that we're able to avoid this uh, infinite loop. So let's uh, start visualizing how this would look like in a, in an actual example. Okay, so given this example where we have the source being zero and the destination being three, we're initially going to start by building out the dictionary that resembles this graph. And it's going to look like this in the end. Once we iterate all the edges, we're going to have a dictionary that holds the state of the graph. So the key for this dictionary is all the nodes that have outgoing edges and their value is just a list of their, a list of the nodes that they're going to. So for zero, it's going to one and three. We also have one uh, that goes to two. We have two that goes to three and that should be it. We're going to use this dictionary actually to uh, in our depth first search function so that we can iterate uh, through the graph. So once we uh, call our depth first search function, we're going to obviously start from the source. Just the signature of the function is going to be the source, uh, destination, the dictionary we, we built, and like a scene uh, dictionary so that we can avoid the infinite loop that we talked about. So initially what we're going to do is uh, check if, if we've seen the node that we're at right now. If we did, then that indicates that we're in a loop, so we can return false. We can also check if there is any edges going out of the node that we're in right now. If there is no, we need to make sure that that's the destination. If it's not, then we return false. Otherwise, we iterate the graph uh, using the dictionary here. So initially, we're going to mark zero as seen. So the way that's going to work is we're going to call this function initially with zero as the source. And the destination is always going to be the same, which is three. And now we go through each of the neighboring nodes in zero in a for loop. So we're going to start with one. Then we're going to recursively call this DFS function, passing it one as the source now. So now we're going to be a one and we're going to go through the checks that we already did. One is not in scene. Uh, so far scene only contains zero and one is also not the destination since it already it still has outgoing edges so now we're gonna jump here to one and we're gonna do a for loop for all of its edges which uh, just so happens to be just one edge in this case so now we're gonna jump to two 
and we're gonna mark one as seen. So now we've seen one, and we're gonna do the same checks that we did at one as well. We're gonna mark two as seen and jump to its edge, which is three. So once we reach three, we're gonna have a check that says like, uh, as I mentioned before, if there's any outgoing edges and there is no outgoing edges for this case, and it's also the destination. So we just simply return true. So we're here at this point and we're just gonna return through through throughout this call stack. So now we're gonna go back to here and go through the second iteration of the for loop. So now we're gonna look at three. So from zero now, we're gonna go again to three and notice that three is not even in the scene dictionary. That's cause we check whether this is a destination uh, before we add it to the scene dictionary. So now when we're at zero and we go through to three, we also return true again. And this function ends up returning true because it goes through each of the possible paths starting from the source and they all lead to the destination. So now let's quickly look at an example where this returns false just to see what that looks like. We have zero goes to one and goes to two and two is the destination. So in this case, the dictionary is just going to look like this zero goes to one and two. That represents the graph. So now when we do the for loop and go through each of the neighbors of zero, we're going to start at zero recursively call the DFS, go to one. And from one, we have that check that we make sure that this is the destination if there's no outgoing edges. And that's simply going to return false because this is not the destination and there's no outgoing edges. So there is no possible way for us to get to the destination from the source using this path. So this ends up returning false in the DFS. And that's how we can uh, code this uh, algorithm. I think this will make more sense once it's uh, seen uh, in the code. So let me jump to that. For the coding part, uh, let's start by first building out the representation of this graph, which is going to be that dictionary. And here we can just have a check if we don't have anything in the dictionary or the destination, or sorry, the source is not even in the dictionary. Uh, we can return false right away and define our function here, the DFS function, which takes the uh, initial node that we're going to be on. So current node, the destination, the dictionary that we built out and a scene map. So we can avoid the infinite loop. And let me just return this and fill in the code for this. So when we call it, we're going to call it with the source, the destination that we're given the dictionary that we already built and we can just leave this an empty parameter since it's going to default to an empty map. So here is where we check whether we've hit a, a dead end. So there's a couple things that we need to make sure if we hit a dead end, uh, make sure it's the destination. So instead of make sure like return true, if it's the destination, if we've seen the node, then we return false to avoid the infinite loop. Otherwise, return true. So for the function, that's going to be the final case. We're going to return true if it satisfies everything else. So if we hit a dead end, that means that there's no neighboring nodes in the dictionary for the current node that we're in. So we only want to return true if it's the destination. So we're going to do return. Uh, this current node that we're on is equal to the destination. So that way, once we hit this node one, this is not the destination. So this is going to be false. Current is going to be one and destination is going to be two. So if the node that we've seen is in, the node that we're in is in scene, then we return false. Otherwise we can add it to the scene, uh, have the recursive call here. And once we're done, we can remove it from the scene array, scene dictionary. So now we go through each neighbor and if the recursive call returns false, we can simply return false. Otherwise we return true and that should be it. There's one uh, minor check that we can do uh, to prevent the case. So if, if we only have one node that goes to itself, like it's the source and destination, we can uh, simply check here and rather than returning false, we can just return whether the source is equal to the destination. If it's that's, if that's the case, we want to return true. Uh, otherwise, that should do it. And just a small typo, we actually want to go through the edges here. And yeah, that should be it. Hopefully that made sense. Thank you for watching.